Hi, I'm Bonnie Saratori with Spiritual Acceleration. And today I want to share about ghost hunting, my direct experiences of actually being hired, as well as just my own experiences of ghost hunting. So um, back when I had my practice in Auburn, I was uh, known as the kick butt hyp hypnotherapist. So, you know, going into really deep stuff. But basically, in some of those times, in those early times of my working, getting hired, clients would hire me to come to their house. You know, I'd drive on down to the Bay Area, wherever I was going. And, you know, they'd have me, you know, because things were happening. Things would go, things would, like, things would move. Sometimes I actually found things were missing, okay? So lots of sounds and people hearing, hearing footsteps and hearing what do you call it? Stairs creaking and doors closing and that type of thing. So I would go and, you know, go into the house. And basically what would happen is, is I would start connecting, like listening, feeling, sensing. Then I would start talking directly with the discarnate. Okay. And <clears throat> for the, for the places where I actually did the clearings for the houses with the, with the people that were still stuck in there, these were pretty, pretty easy. These were not a big deal. And so what would happen, I'd connect with the spirits and talk to them, let them know, I'd show them that they had passed, find out different reasons why they were there. You know, some people were attached to the house that was their house at some point in time. Some of them actually didn't know they died. I'm just, I'm just in a little bit of a blanket right now in my, in my journeys of doing uh, house ghost hunting, house clearings. And sometimes people were afraid to leave afraid they were going to be judged or punished, go to hell, that type of thing. And then sometimes they were there because there was a family member that they didn't want to leave, that type of thing. So again, these were pretty simple ones. So after I spoke with the being, made sure they understood, and then I would bring the light down and have them look into the light and then also bring in their loved ones and then let those loved ones so they could feel, sense, hear, see, know that they're there. And they would most always go pretty easily. Okay. Again, these are just your normal humans. So I think it's important you understand that, you know, we have a house that's haunted. If it's human, you're just dealing with, you know, somebody who's either, either hurt, lost, confused, afraid. Okay. They're pretty simple to, to connect with and, and to get them to go. Okay. And then there was another time. This was, I was in Hawaii on Kauai. I have friends that live there. And we were walking along the beach and there's this place that's called the Plantation Resort. Okay? And what it has is these little cottages, like almost like maybe one bedroom, even one room, small cottages. And <clears throat> these cottages, you know, they were placed on the land, different areas. They were actually, most of them had been moved from different places, but some were originally there. And she, my friend Cynthia was telling me about this one place. I can't remember the name of it, but it was a short name, you know, like four, four letters. And she was saying that you know, the people would come in and, and people wouldn't stay. Like people would rent that particular cottage and they would leave, leave that next day. And then she was also saying that the workers wouldn't, didn't want to go in either. So I, I could, I could knew, I knew something was up, but she also told me the story about what happened in that cottage. Apparently that this was, this was probably maybe at this point in time, it's probably more like 80 years ago, but a woman had like, I think she had like four children, four or five children. I can't remember exactly how many. And she was, had been outside and she was coming back into the, into her little cottage on a plant. These were, you know, these people were working, working those at the, at the plantation. Okay. And <clears throat> Someone, there was someone that bludgeoned her, came up and just bludgeoned her and beat her, beat her to death. Okay. You know, cracked her head. So she laid ble bleeding in, in, in just laying inside of her, her, her place. And what happened was, and this is very common people, when someone has been killed in a, in a really intense way, oftentimes they can get stuck in that loop where it's like, it's constantly happening. Okay. So for her, you know, she was, she got killed and then her soul leaves the body, but it didn't leave. And so anytime someone would come into the cottage, she would attack them as though they were the ones who attacked her. Okay. So Cynthia was just telling me, telling me that story. So I thought, let's go deal. Let's go help this out. Okay. So we walk up to the college, cottage, 
And we're standing by that front door, right where she, the door had, you know, she, the door was open. She had been on the floor. That's where she died. And the moment we got there, so Cynthia's standing on right over here, like just maybe, just like maybe five feet away. Okay. And I'm right here and close to the door. So what happened was the moment I connected with the spirit, she attacked me. She literally screamed and came at attack and she jumped on me. My body flew back. Cynthia saw it. Her mouth is like wide open. Her eyes were huge because she saw it. Literally, she saw my body. She didn't see the, the woman, but she saw my body literally get blasted, knocked back. Okay. I immediately started speaking with the woman, letting her know, I'm not the one who did this. I'm here to help you. So she calmed down. And then when she calmed down, then she wanted to know about her children. She wanted to know if they were okay. Okay. So unfortunately, I mean, they had been okay for quite some time. I literally took her back. I showed her what happened with her kids. They were all okay. At this point in time, a couple had died. You know, we're talking, like I said, we're talking like you know, back then it was about 70 years earlier that this actually happened. So some of her kids already, they were already, you know, kids. So once she saw that they were okay and, and they were safe, then she was, she was done. And I also showed her, you know, you know letting her see, letting her know I'm, I was not the one. Somebody else did that, took her back, showed her. And then once she knew everything was okay, she literally left, went up into the light, just like that. Okay. So what began to happen at that, at that how at that cottage is now people would stay. There was nothing attacking them. Now the cleaners could come in and feel really good about cleaning, cleaning the, the house. No big deal. Okay. So now that house is no longer haunted and the person that was in there is no longer attacking people, scaring them. So that's over. That place is now just a normal little place. Okay. So, you know, I think what's important, people, is any, if you're dealing with any kind of haunting, if you're just a normal person, you've never really helped spirits leave or, you know, help people to go home, anyone can do it. Anyone, okay? Because they can hear us talking, okay? So you can connect with them and just let them know what's happening. Sometimes just you'll, some, some of you will be able to communicate and get some information. And then you, it's all about helping people to go home. So for me, I treat discarnates as though they're still just real humans, unless there's something other than that. If they're, sometimes they're aliens, sometimes they're critters, creatures, sometimes they're interdimensional. But I meet them where they are, and I treat all discarnates as though they're humans. And with kindness and open heart and to support and help. You know, I don't like rip them out and, you know, cast them out. Unless, unless something's going on where I need to cast them out. But mo mostly it's just treat them like real humans because that's where they're still believing they are. Okay, So like I said, anyone can do it. You connect with the soul, connect with the person, you know, let them know that their family has been waiting for them. And then you actually ask for their family to present and, and then also bring the light of home down where we all go back into when we leave the body. And and then just invite them to go. And uh, actually loved ones will actually reach down, hold hands, take them up. You can also give them things that they want in the light. I used to do this. This was a crack up when I really, really first started way back. You know, uh, when I first started doing uh, um, entity removal, I, I discovered that like I had a little kid one time who wanted to merry-go-round. So right in the light, there's the merry-go-round. So, oh, he was excited to go to the merry-go-round. This is another cool one. It's like, like people that are drinkers, okay, alcoholics, smokers, whatever, eaters, overeaters, chocolate, whatever, whatever. So I'd put those things up in the light. Like, for example, you know, like people that were drinkers are like, oh, my goodness, look at that. There's every kind of beer since the beginning of time. Oh, my goodness. Thousands, 40,000, 100,000 years back from way back then, you know, they'd like, whoa, out of here. Okay. Or, you know, or al alcohol or even you guys, even drugs. Okay. Look, there's all the pot you want. Oh, there's all the heroin you want. There's all the cocaine you want. Any, it's, any, just get them up because here's the thing. Once they're in the light, job done, they're taken care of. There's nothing more for us to do. Okay. So whatever it takes to get them, 
to go, that's what I would do. And yeah, so smorgasbords, you know, like look at the smorgasbord of all this food and whatever. Give them what they want and they go. Oh, here's another one. I used to do this way back. I haven't been doing it recently. But what would happen is if you've ever noticed, if you've ever seen people after they've died, they often start presenting what they look like when they were younger. So what I would do, like, especially for people who were mangled or, or injured or sick or, you know, had, had problems, health issues, physical, whatever, whatever, okay, then I'd show them, oh, look at that. There's your body like it was when you were young, strong and p- powerful and sturdy and healthy and, you know, and they'd see that and they'd go right up into that energy and then they become that. That would start happening anyway, but they didn't know that, okay? So helping people to go is really, really important. So another time, this is way back when my kids were young and my son was probably two years old. And back then, this is when we first, my sister, myself, and my sister-in-law, we started doing what's called automatic writing. What happened was, and we didn't know this at the time, okay? So my sister and sister-in-law, they're living in California. I'm living in, in Lake Tahoe in Nevada side, but I'd come on down and we spent lots of time together. So they started doing the Ouija board thing. You know, back then it seemed like, oh, really cool. Very cool. Uh-huh. So they were using the Ouija board. And then, then they started doing the automatic writing. And I came on down to see them visiting. And they were doing that. And I was like, I got to do it. Because you, know, you have to keep in mind, my, my life, my sister's life, we've always known there were discarnates. We've always seen and known. Our house was haunted in, in where I live, where I grew up. In Cupertino. We had a, a ghost that were moving my things around, moving my shoes around, jumping on the bed, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. We saw them. We knew it. It was normal. With my grandmother, <laughs> we would do, you know, different, we'd get, gather the neighborhood kids and do things, you know, like communicating with the spirits, getting people to do different things. And the spirits would come in and help, help show them what they wanted them to do. So it's been part of our lives. So when that was happening and I was like, Oh my God, I want to do that. So I started doing that. And then we went beyond that. And that's when we started channeling. So in the channeling, we were bringing in energies, letting spirits come into the body, not knowing what we were doing. So several things happened. Okay. But I want to back up a little bit. So we were, I was at my sister's and my sister-in-law was living there. We were in the bedroom one day and sitting, my sister had those this well, wallpaper on the wall kind of it was like a black gray white kind of you know all these different f- figures things it was a cool way of wallpaper so we're sitting on the on the bed and this is after we had already been doing you know come in opening the gate open the doorways for the spirits to come in and giving the go ahead not knowing what we're dealing with thinking everybody's like you know safe never crossed our minds that there would be intense energies so we're sitting on the bed and I don't even remember which one of us said it, but, you know, I'm watching the wallpaper and I'm telling you straight up, that wallpaper started turning into demonic faces, shifting and changing demonic faces coming out at us and shit. So I don't, it could have been my sister, could have been my, I don't know, could have been me. I don't remember. All I know is someone says, does anyone see the wallpaper? I'm like, yes. And we all jump up and run out of the room, you know, and that's when we started knowing we got to do stuff. We are not safe. Okay, so what also happened is my sister-in-law went to a healer of sorts and they said, these beings are trying to take over your body. And that's what was happening. We didn't know it. We were just opening up, letting things come in. And then these spirits, you know, they started to possess us in a way that was taking over. So we all shut everything down and stopped, you know, totally shut that, shut it down. We shut it down. I shut it down for eight years. And, but also during that time, that same time, my son was little and not even, he was under about a year and a half and we had a crib he couldn't get out of. And I was sitting on the couch one day crocheting evening. He had to put him to bed and all of a sudden screaming like unbelievable blood curdling screams. I run down the hall, open the door. He's on the floor trying to crawl. And here's this energy right above him. Not a good thing. Okay. Scary, scary, scary stuff. So I grabbed him, closed the door. And, you know, so I actually ended up keeping him close by me for several years because I was so afraid that these things were trying to take him. We actually left that house, but we moved to another house. And then I also started seeing little light beings, you know, light lights 
that would that would present. We'd be in the living room and watching, you know, and all of a sudden these lights would start coming. The good thing is, is those lights were not bad. They were they were actually pot good beings, you know, the light beings that were actually actually helping us. But it took you know years before I ever felt safe for my son, you know, because they were literally going to you know, they wanted to. I don't know what they were doing, but it was it, it was very scary, very intense, very scary. So, you know, there's always there can be all kinds of things happening. You know what I mean? Like in a house or a property. I mean, I've done things too, like um, Sarah Hot Springs. This was way back. I'm trying to remember how long ago that was. Um, it was probably like in '99, 2000, somewhere in there. I actually went because they were trying to, Sarah Hot Springs at that time was bad. The negative the energy was negative, very, very negative. And they had, it had been a place where the mafia had been. It had been a, a place where people would go for gambling, prostitution, alcohol, all kinds of stuff. And it had a hot spring. So the energy there was very bad. The people had been murdered there, all kinds of stuff. So they had people come in trying to shift it and all that. So I was asked to go there and I and had another person with me who actually does like cool, really powerful stuff as well. So we went there and this is really a cool story because it changed my life. So we went there and you could feel it. We went through the entire place and it's like, whoa, intense energy. Okay. So we, we literally went up, there's a little knoll right above the property, okay, but right above the, the whole place. So the friend and I went up there and he was going to basically hold light and I'm going to go in to find out, you know, what's up. And to try to close this, you know, try to shift and change the energy. So what, we, what I, we've discovered was there was a black energy coming through all the way through negative energy that had been opened up by a Native American. So check this one out. So here I am tracking in, getting a sense of what happened. And all of a sudden, this Native American appears. And he's, again, it's like, kind of like the Hawaii story, but he's like thinking I'm one of the white people that, that had killed his people. So what happened was the moment he saw me, I let him know I'm here to help. I'm here to help. So then he showed me, told me the story. They, his, him and his peoples had got, they were on a hunting, going hunting. They came back to the white men had killed their people. This is how emotion can do stuff. That Native American, that little, that warrior was so enraged he cursed the land. He cursed the white people. He opened up a vortex of energy that was in the earth, but he opened it up through that hatred and wanting revenge, wanting to kill, wanting to punish, wanting retribution for the white man who did this to his people. The energy opened up. That energy was still happening, coming right in through where they, where they built the house and where that hot springs is. Okay, so that energy was coming through. So, so basically, you know, I let him know his peoples are okay. So again, I, I let him, you know, let him go into the light. And then I'm dealing with that, trying to deal with that really black energy. Okay, so what happened was, is I'm going into the blackness, and all of a sudden, this angel presents, telling me to keep coming, you know, come on in. And and good, see, here's the, here's where the knowing came in. It's like, whoa, all righty. So I'm believing, trust. All of a sudden, I had the knowing. And I immediately, I started backing out. And then I saw it was a black angel. Okay, The black angel was trying to get my energy, pull me in into this black stuff. And I would have been sucked in and captured and stuck for, who, you know, who's going to come get me? You know what I'm saying? So I, that woke me up big time to the power and the energy of black angels, which I didn't know about before. So that's another, for me, that was a direct experience that I woke up to that there really are. And, you know, there's dark energies that are presenting that can literally hurt us. Okay. So then what I also saw in that energy was the, po the polarities of light and dark. Okay. I know this is hard to imagine, hard to understand. And I saw it, I was there, I witnessed it and I was in it. So the blackness, there's, it's almost like the balance, yin and yang. Okay. So everything's a balance. So these energies, these polarities were the darkest of blackest of black and the lightest of light. And they came right together like that. They didn't merge. They didn't blend. It was just pure energy of 
you know, the blackest of black, which is the evilest, darkest stuff that we have on planet Earth, as well as the lightest of light energy that we also have on planet Earth. So I saw that. That also woke me up to energies and how, how it, you know, the energy frequencies that are held in the certain places, the vibrational places of the lightest of light and the darkest of dark and everything in between. So ultimately what, be, what happened was, is the energy was like, I, so I didn't, I wasn't, I wanted to you know, cover it, but what ended up happening is by going in to the energy and then discovering and backing out and not being pulled into the blackness and lost for eternity. Literally, I was able to start working the energy so that rather than blackness, negativity, you know, pockets of that energy in the earth itself that came from ener peoples creating hatreds and ceremonies and stuff of that nature that people don't understand that gets anchored in, you awaken these energies get created. So what I did was I was able to shift all that black out and I began to spin the energy and all that was coming through now was light. And so the light came through right under the house and all, it became like this vortex of light, like a crystal light. So I had gone back there several years later and now it's this amazing, beautiful place, like seriously, you know, full of light. It's a hot springs. People go into the, you know, into the waters and, there's different areas. It's just a really lovely place now. So again, you know, people, it's like we have these experiences and there's places where there's negativity, darkness happening. It can be shifted. Most everything can be shifted. Okay. I've, I've done that many times, lots of different places, closing portals, gateways, openings that other people have tried to close, but you know, you, they don't clearly didn't know how to do it. Sticking a rod in a lightning rod or a, a brat or what is it? A copper rod or something. There's a belief that that does it. Not my experience, you know, but whatever. So, just, you know, so I think what's really important is to, when we're dealing with these kinds of energies, especially intense energies, we, the best thing we can do is just not be afraid. Because here's the truth. They're, they can't really hurt you, really. Um, they, you know, your body can get hurt, but who you are can never be touched. And they get disempowered when we're not afraid. Okay, so all of a sudden, like with that black angel, she had power until I will realize, wait a second, it wasn't that I was afraid, but she still had power because I was opening, saying, you know, following, going with that. But I've also had other experiences where really intense energies, you know, trying to attack me or whatever, and just not being afraid. Okay, so that not being afraid, they lose power. So they feed off your fear, they feed off you know, that kind of energy. And and they're not as badass as they like to act, seem like they are, okay? So the moment someone, you know, comes up against them, they usually back away, they'll leave, you know, they'll run away even. it's Because just think about it, most of these are humans. And if you confront a human, you know, and show them your power, they're not going to fight you. They're going to, most of the time, they're scaredy cats anyway. You know, people that are big energies attack, you know, if you... you underneath they're just afraid themselves okay so uh so you know being like that if you're ever coming across intense energies you, you just, just be and remember no fear no fear they can't hurt you they're not going to hurt you okay so i think that's really really important to remember so in my life and my world i mean <laughs> i deal with dead people almost every day okay and i've learned i got 37 years of being a professional but i have an entire lifetime of literally dealing with discarnates and other creatures and beings, other time space dimensions, you know, all these things that come into our time space and going through portals and gateways and wormholes and veils and all these things. So, you know, I've been dealing with these energies again, you know, my, my entire life. So I've learned some stuff that, you know, I've learned some absolutes and I do know the power of, our own energy and then who we really are and to not be afraid and that we can assist just about anything or anyone to go back to its other oh it's time and space or go up into the light wherever it needs to go so fun and games in the shaman's world of dealing with dead people ghosts things of that nature so hopefully you enjoyed these stories you know that they're fun and they're all real, absolutely hands down, truthful, real stories that I lived and have gone through and experienced directly. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed it and, you know, maybe even share your story if you've got one. All right. So, you know, again, Bonnie Saratori, Spiritual Acceleration. And we love, I love what I do. My team loves what they do. And we just invite you to keep coming back to see what else we're going to bring to the forefront, bring to awareness. For those of you who would, who actually would like to learn how to do your own house clearing and you feel like you've got some abilities, you don't have to be real psychic to do it, okay? And it, it, it does help if you have the ability to tune in, but you can also sense energy. That's why you're knowing your house is haunted, or maybe you've got someone whose house is haunted. So we do have a program that you go at your own pace. It's a video recording of an actual clearing. It's a teaching of how to clear the house, and we go through each room. And so there's uh, great information there that you can actually get and study and then be able to do your own house clearing. So that could be really cool. The other thing too is in our foundations, you know, we're teaching you how to help discarnates leave the body. So the foundations program has lots of topics and everything you would possibly need to know to be able to do your own clearings and your own healings and also be able to help discarnates go back home into the light. So, you know, we again, we have these amazing, amazing programs that help you to learn how to do the things that my team accelerators do, as well as myself. So you might want to get in on that foundations and find out, you know, how that can change your world, change your life. It's a pretty profound program. And another part of it is, is that major clearings, major healings happen for you at a very accelerated rate. So your life will change, become more positive, you'll become more potent, more centered, more grounded, more stable, more of your true authentic self by taking this program, Foundations. So lots of cool stuff for you. Hope I see you there. <laughs>